Next, from the Supreme Court in Springfield, Chief Justice Kilbride launches a campaign with the Illinois Judges Association to improve civic education in our high schools. This runs about 20 minutes. But we're gathered uh, for a very important purpose, a Project 225 as it's known, in celebration of the 225th anniversary of the United States Constitution. Uh, in 2007, uh, many of my colleagues who are with us today were uh, together uh, when we visited Chicago at Loyola Law School when uh, then-retired Justice of the United States Supreme Court, uh, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, spoke about judicial independence, uh, judicial impartiality, and the importance of civic education and the lack of understanding of civic education in this country on the decline she warned us about and how that impacts our court system. And uh, I and others on the court, as well as judges outside of the Illinois Supreme Court, took her challenge and began in an informal way, Justice Pope, uh, not in a trained, uh, organized way, as you'll hear about later today from Justice Pope, but uh, to going out to visit schools, high schools, and I, I made a number of visits, not being trained by Justice Pope in her program, but, uh, but I can tell you it's a, a fascinating effort uh, that, that's been organized here, and, and I've had some firsthand knowledge with it, both at the high school level, grade schools, and even colleges. And it's something that I and members of this court uh, supported. And I want to uh, really applaud uh, both uh, Judge Rita Novak, the current president of the Illinois Judges Association, and, and Justice uh, Carol Pope from the Fourth District Appellate Court, the immediate past president of the Illinois Judges Association, who last year, as I understand, and you correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, uh, when you get a chance, <laughs> well, who, who uh, embarked upon a formal program to, uh, to begin the training of judges, uh, to, to have this program where it is now to be launched, uh, and I'll let uh, Judge Pope, uh, Judge Pope, Judge Novak, explain the 225 project, and uh, I want to give you a big round of applause. Thank you, Chief Justice Kilbride, for allowing us to be present in this beautiful courtroom, uh, in this lovely building, and for every, each and every member of the Supreme Court who's here, thank you, a heartfelt thank you. Your uh, invitation and prestige has really heightened awareness of this program in, in a very profound way, and we're very grateful. On September 17th, our nation will celebrate the 225th anniversary of the signing of the United States Constitution. The anniversary gives all Americans a chance to stop and reflect on the genius of our nation's founding document and to renew their commitment to the privileges and obligations of citizenship on which the vitality of our constitutional system depends. So what are the features of our Constitution that we celebrate most. Most people will say the rights that are contained in the Bill of Rights, the freedom of speech, the freedom of press, the right to practice a religion of your choice, the right to have a jury trial, to be free from governmental invasions. And these are all very important fundamental freedoms that are enshrined in our Constitution. But equally important is the structure that the government that the Constitution set up for government in and of itself. And that is that we have three branches of government that are independent on e interdependent on each other, but independent. And this system of checks and balances and limitations and cooperation that is required to make laws and enforce them it was one of the key provisions and one feature of our Constitution that's been copied around the world. Why do these rights and obligations then mean to, what do they mean to Americans today? Consider the opening words of the Constitution. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure less of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. 
do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. Noble words. And what they do is remind us that while our Constitution creates a structure of government, the power to govern belongs ultimately to the people. So the preservation of the government and it, the, the, the vitality of our democracy depends on the involvement of citizens. And yet, the lack of civic knowledge is a pressing problem. Nearly two-thirds of Americans cannot name the three branches of government. And yet, three out of four can name all three, three stooges. More than a quarter of the public does not know which country America fought in the Revolutionary War. More than half of eighth graders can state the purpose of the Bill of Rights, and fewer, only one in 10, can identify the meaning of checks and balances. Last year, the Illinois Judges Association decided to tackle this problem by bringing the courtroom to the classroom, a civics program presented by a judge to 11th and 12th grade students to explain the, process, the structure of government and specifically to talk about one particular case. And what better way to bring civics alive in the classroom than to have a real live judge talking about a real United States Supreme Court case on a topic that is going to be of great interest to the students, as I'll let Justice Pope explain. So this year, we decided that we would like to have a critical mass of these programs presented. And so during Constitution Week and in some of the weeks following, we intend to have 225 presentations of the Bringing the Courtroom to the Classroom program to students throughout the state of Illinois. We have a number of programs scheduled, well over 100 at this time, and phone calls keep coming in as this information is transmitted to the schools and we're hearing back from the schools as they begin their school year. We're confident that we'll conclude with more than 225 as the program gets underway. We hope to fuel interest in bringing the courtroom to the classroom program into the future so that we will continue to spark public awareness about the importance of our Constitution and the obligations of being a citizen. I'd like to, now at this point now, introduce you to Justice Carol Pope. As the Chief Justice explained, Carol is the immediate past president of the Illinois Judges Association. And this program, along with someone who's in the audience, Carol Zirkel, um, was there, uh, the 225 project was their brainchild. For Carol Pope, the brainchild was the program itself. So I'd like to have her talk a little bit about that. Thank you. You know, Chief Justice, uh, when you said there's one dignitary sitting over here, I started to sit up straight and <laughs> fix my sweater, and then he introduced you to Katie Sidwa. And I mean, that is so totally appropriate because I'm so glad Katie's been able to come over today. She's from my hometown of Petersburg and attended Porter High School and was there last spring when we did this program there. And really, this is what it's about. It's about the students. It's not so much about us and the judges, although this program is really a testament to the community and civic mindedness of judges throughout the state of Illinois. Um, Rita Novak didn't tell you this, but we have over 175 judges already trained, and in part that was due to the cooperation of the Supreme Court this year in letting us train our judges at our education conference when all of the judges from throughout the state are in Chicago be trained on other matters of legal significance. Judges got up at 7 in the were at our program. They had to get up before 7, but they were at our program at 7 in the morning to undergo the training. And I saw somebody there in December, and it was our chief who came to the training. So he is actually trained now. And other justices from our Supreme Court were also there, who shall remain nameless because I don't think everybody was there. So. <laughs> but we had several, and I think that's just a terrific testament to the interest in this area. Um, some of the judges who are here today, I wanted to just introduce to you. Jennifer Bocknecht is my downstate co-chair. Christy Salverson is here from way far south in the state. Jim Snyder is here from 
Chicago. These are all judges who have been involved in planning this statewide organization. Uh, Carolyn Smoot is here. She's also from downstate near Carbondale, Marion. Margaret, Mellon, Margaret Mullen and Mary Shostak are here. Uh, Mary's the second vice president of IJA. Steve Narduli and um, April Tremper are here, both trained judges, and John Cody from Taylorville, who's the treasurer of IJA and a trained judge. And lastly, I just want to recognize our own two state reps who came because they are a separate branch of government, but this is such a good way to bring us together in a positive way. And that's Rich Brower and Raymond Poe, who are both here too. And I thank them for coming today. This whole program that, that, that's bringing the courtroom to the classroom was developed last year through the Illinois Judges Association as a special project. And I, I believe that it's really a way to bring civics alive by bringing a judge into a classroom. This program, is designed for classroom sizes of 20 or less. So it's one judge, one classroom at a time. As opposed to this other major program that IJA has been involved with called Seven Reasons to Leave the Party, which is a big rock and roll program about drug abuse, alcohol abuse, and sexual risky behavior, which is all important. But that program's delivered to one high school at a time, an entire high school in an auditorium setting. And if you're like me, you might be a little intimidated, even as a judge, in appearing in front of an entire high school. Never quite sure what's gonna happen. So this is a little more of a controlled setting and I think appeals to a lot of judges who might not be comfortable in getting up in front of an entire high school, they can handle getting up in front of a classroom. Um, we concentrate on the case of New Jersey versus TLO. It's a Fourth Amendment case. But let me tell you how we start the program out. This is really fun. We have a picture of Steven Tyler. How many of you know who Steven Tyler is? He's a Aerosmith band member and an American Idol judge. And then we have his picture juxtaposed with the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, Robert Thomas. No, not Robert Thomas. <laughs> John Roberts! Like you got a promotion out of me. John Roberts. Yes. <laughs> and uh, what's fun about it is it gets, it's an icebreaker for the class because I'll ask the question, how many of you can uh, tell me who this man is? And you'll get 90% of the kids raising their hand because they recognize Steve Tyler. And then when you ask how many of you know who this man is, I, I've probably presented to over 200 students myself already. I've only had two students who could identify our Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. So it's a nice way to break the ice. and. Uh, then we get into a little skit that the kids act out based on the facts of New Jersey versus TLO, which was a case where a student was caught smoking in the bathroom in violation of school rules. And she was searched uh, by an assistant principal and marijuana was found in her purse together with some other items. And the issue was, did the school personnel need a search warrant to search a student on student grounds? And the answer that the US Supreme Court gave was no, they need reasonable suspicion. So it's a case that's of great interest to students. We talk about use of cell phones in schools. If it's against the rule, can they take your cell phone, look at your text messages, look at your emails, those types of things that kids can really relate to. And uh, I think it's my job to introduce Katie. Yes. If you do that next. Katie Sidwell, as you've all heard, is a, a freshman student, a first year student at the University of Illinois in Springfield. And last spring, she was in Ms. Perez's class at Porta High School when I came to give the program. And I asked Katie if she would come and just talk a little bit of, from the student's perspective about the program today. So what, please welcome Katie Sidwell. Thank you. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for letting me be here and share this amazing experience and celebration. I would like to give a big thanks to Justice Carol Pope for the opportunity to share my whole experience briefly, and I'll make it briefly. Um, like she said, I'm a first year student at UIS, and I was in Ms. Perez's US seminar class last spring when she came in. And what she did, she with the TLO case, she made it very understanding for us. She presented a PowerPoint with the pictures. It was kind of comical. And it made us all like, it made us understand she met out pretty much in high schooler terms, I guess you could say, because reading it out of a textbook isn't exactly easy. And um, when she brought up the TLO case versus New Jersey in 1985, 
it kind of it was easy because we got to be we were able to put ourselves in her shoes and we could understand where um, the school was coming from and it was shocking to see some of the classroom was like oh my gosh no I would never let them go through my stuff and then some of us were like sure and then we threw around other ideas like what if one of the students had like weapons in their purse or something like that other sorts of things and then they would change their mind and they're like oh well yeah I'd want them to go through my stuff and it happens more often than we'd like to admit we'd find like notes on the floor or something like that with threats and everything and it makes it makes you come to realize that the principals and stuff aren't just there to get you in trouble for having your cell phones out and stuff like that and they're there to keep you safe and be authorities to keep you safe and keep you in line and stuff like that and I was I was one of those students I was a senior and I was like oh I run this school like <laughs> no one can stop me I'm a senior and I was just like the principals are just there to get you in trouble and all sorts of things like that and when she came in it really opened my eyes to realize that the reason why we have authority figures like that is to keep us in line and keep us kind of like safe and stuff like that and um, when Justice Pope came in the more t I realized that more teens need to know this more teens need to come to realize that situations like this can happen and people aren't there just to get you in trouble they're there to they're there to keep you safe in order and in order and stuff like that and I learned that law and order and rank is what keeps the country safe and stable and it was really eye-opening and it was an awesome experience when she came in and shared all this with us to have a real real life judge and real life classroom from a real court system and that it was just really neat and it was it was an awesome experience like I went home and filled my parents in on it and everything and they're like oh my gosh and they're like I hope they're doing this more and stuff like that and I really hope you guys carry through this program because it, I mean more teens need to be aware of this sort of stuff so once again I'd like to thank you for having me out here. Thank you, Katie. You really are the star of the show. <laughs> We're just going to take a few more minutes because there are some other dignitaries here that I would like to introduce you to, and I'm awfully glad that um, Justice Pope introduced you to the judges who've been involved in the program or are involved in the IJA. But I did talk about three branches of government, so I do want to highlight the three who are here. We know the Supreme Court and my colleagues on the um, uh, the other the circuit court or the reviewing courts um, but although the governor was not able to be present today he in sympathy with the program there's a proclamation from the governor declaring September 17th through the 21st Constitution week throughout Illinois and um, he issued that uh, when we explained to him the, what we would be doing so He's here in spirit, I, I should say, at least through his proclamation. In addition, we have Ann Spillane, who is here. She's the chief of staff from the Attorney General Madigan's office. She tells me that Attorney General Madigan sends her apologies. She had a conflict and wasn't able to be here. As uh, Justice Pope explained, we have two representatives from the legislative branch, and we are just so delighted to have you here, um, Representative Poe and Brower both from the Springfield area, the 99th and 100th district um, representative district. And we have a number of bar officials, um, including a very nice representation from the Illinois State Bar Association. John Thies, the IA president. We have Bob Craighead, the executive director. Dave Anderson, the assistant director. And Jim Covington, the legislative affairs uh, director. We, Frank Martinez from the Illinois Government Bar Association is present today, as well as Pamela Hart from the Central Illinois Bar Association and Raylene DeWitt from the Sangamon County Bar Association. <coughs> there are just a couple of other people that I would like to thank for making this available, this beautiful room and the ability to have the ceremony today. And that is um, Joe Tiber from the Supreme Court's press staff, 
Adam Vaught from the Chief Judge's Office, uh, who was very helpful uh, from the very get-go um, in setting this up. Chris Royce, who's working with the Illinois Judges Association in planning this, and Joe uh, Don uh, from Joe's staff. If there's a school out there interested in uh, having a judge go out to the school for this program, you can communicate with the Illinois Judges Association at IJA.org, and we will connect the school with the judge. Thank you so much for being here. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.